What's up, it's BT here, and I don't know if you've noticed this, but there's kind of a lot of keyboards on the market right now, making the keyboard space super volatile because there's a lot of good keyboards out there, the quality is only getting better, and they're being produced at a higher rate than ever. So what separates a good keyboard from a great keyboard? I think it's the ability to create a good experience for the customer, especially for beginners looking to get into the space. The analogy that I like to give is it's like going to a five-star restaurant, but getting bad service. No matter how good the food was, the service is what's gonna stick out in your mind, and there's no way you're gonna go back, let alone recommend a friend go there. Just like the keyboard space, the keyboards with the best experiences are getting recommended while the subpar ones, or even the good ones are falling by the wayside. And I think that's the theme that we're gonna be seeing going into 2022. That being said, one of the keyboards that I put together recently that I believe has one of the best experiences for somebody looking to get into the hobby because the experience that you get with it for exceeds the price point is the Icky 68. The version that I have is the round one. I know that they're already on the round two. That one just dropped in November. There have been some updates to it. They offer more plate options. Now it's available with an aluminum top, two new PCBs, a wired and a Bluetooth. They also have some stabilizers now, which they didn't have in the round one. So they're adding a lot more value to this keyboard as time goes on. They've also changed the silicone insert to the new poron dampening pad. Since so much has changed, I wanna focus on my experience with this keyboard and why I think it's worth your money. Since this is a kit, they're gonna give you everything that you need from the case to the plate to the inserts. They even give you this really cool little coin that has the number of your keyboard on it. Really cool touch, definitely not necessary, but again, it adds to the experience of this keyboard. The build process is a huge part of the experience for anybody and I got to give them props here. They have a build guide that is great for people just starting out. Some people just send you the keyboard and then you have to look around the internet on how to build it and some people do it differently. I like that they have a nice concise building guide with some solid tips in there. Some of the things that stood out to me while building the Icky 68 was just how much silicone dampening there was. They've got these huge slabs in the bottom of the case and they even give you this insert for in between your PCB and the plate. Combine this with the polycarbonate casing and the gasket mounts that this has, you can already tell that this is gonna be a thocky keyboard. They almost make it impossible to have any case reverb here. So if you're the kind of person that likes a pingy or hollow type keyboard, this is not for you. While we're on the topic, this is gasket mount, okay? That's not normally something you'd see at this price point. They do offer some silicone strips in here. They're a bit firmer than the Peron strips. So if you want a firmer typing experience, you can use that. But nah, we like a soft bottom out around these parts, so we went with the Peron strips. They have these posts around the keyboard where you can put the gasket strips in. You can also choose how many and where you want to put them, depending on how much flex you want. I did notice some imperfections here around the post, but these type of cases aren't gonna be perfect Perfect. They're meant to be produced very fast with little to no QC. Now I wanna talk about my favorite part of this entire build, that is the badge. It goes in with two screws and has a magnetic strip that fits right into the polycarbonate case. Then they have these little customizable badges that you can just slap on there and hot swap, which is really nice. I definitely wanna pick up some different colored badges to go with the different keycap sets that I'm gonna be putting on this keyboard. Now this is the first time seeing a badge on this kind of polycarbonate case for me personally, or an ABS case, making in this case to stand out from the crowd. There's also a little space right below the badge where the RGB will shine through the silicone pad. And they give you this little emblem as well as this little blocker. If you don't want that shine through, you'll see that later on in the build. I've seen people doing their own cutouts and placing it over the silicone and making their own logos for the keyboard, which is pretty cool. And as you can see, there's a lot of different mods you can do with this keyboard, which only adds to the fun and overall experience of this keyboard. Duroc stabilizers here, nothing crazy. These are just lubed with some Crytox Dual 5 grade zero loop and dielectric grease for the wires. Now this is hot swap, so you'll be able to switch out your switches. That is great for somebody that doesn't know what they want right off the bat, and it'll allow you to play around with the switches. I definitely recommend putting some switches onto the board before you lay the meat and potatoes down into the keyboard case. Now the switches that I went with this time around were these new tactile switches from Lube Switches. They are the cotton candy switches. They are a 
light tactile switch that's manufactured by JWK, so you know they're gonna be smooth as butter. These have been lubed and filmed with some Tribosis 3204 lube. They run for 650 for 10 switches. These are going to feel very familiar to you if you've ever tried Ergo Clear switches. Nice, light, tactile bump at the top of the switch that's not gonna offend anybody. And these are Linear Gang approved, even though they're tactile because they're so light. So the keycaps I went with for this build were the GMK Draculas. These keycaps did take a while to come in, well, a very long time to come in, and it ruffled a lot of people's feathers. I even saw some people posting that the colors were off. I'm not gonna lie. It looked horrible on their pictures, but after actually getting them in and seeing them in person myself, I think those people were actually capping and did something to alter the colors of their photos to freak people out because this keycap set is gorgeous. It lived up to my expectations of it and I'm glad they took their time to get the colors right. They just did a round two, but if you miss it on that, now that they got the color spot on, it's not gonna take two years. You're gonna get them very soon. Well. Hopefully within the next year. Now I also want to do a sound test to compare this to another favorite board of mine that's very similar. And I know you guys are going to be asking about it. It's the KBD Fan 67 Lite R2. The price is a little bit better on the KBD Fan 67 Lite, but you don't get the badge and some of these other cool experience making features. All right, so do me a favor, guys. If you are enjoying this video, hit that sub button. It really helps the channel out and it helps me get more videos out to you. Okay, so here's my rundown of the configuration for this build. Let's drop a sound test so you can hear what it sounds sounds like. So as expected, this is a very thocky keyboard, which is exactly what I like, and it's going to be miles better than most of the stuff you're going to be getting from a stock keyboard. So this keyboard is already really thocky with an aluminum plate. I'm curious to see what it sounds like with their new polycarbonate plate. The case has RGB and it has that logo down at the right, which looks really nice when completely built. This is via supported, so if you wanna change the RGB or any of the configurations of the keys, you can do that. Plug and play, that's what I'm talking about. It just works right out of the box. Who remembers the nightmares of having to do a QMK flash just to be able to use your keyboard efficiently? Still gives me nightmares to this day. I don't want to talk about it. The build process was nice and easy and straightforward and I only see it getting easier with the add-ons that they did to this keyboard. I'm kind of kicking myself I didn't pick up the wireless R2 version of this, Wookie Studios. If you see this, hook your boy up. Something I haven't touched on yet is the layout. I love this cluster at the top right of the keyboard. I've always wanted this layout and I think it looks super aesthetic and different instead of having a straight line down the right side of the keyboard. Of course, it makes the keyboard a little bit longer, but hey, the aesthetics are on point. Typing on this has been amazing. There's a good amount of flex here. Now, I've seen some people take out the silicone pad in the bottom, but I quite like the weight of this and the way it sounds as is. So I don't really see myself taking it out. You can also remove some of the gaskets around the outside. Some people have done just the sides. I think if you really wanna change the way this keyboard flexes, just go with the PC plate instead of an aluminum plate. Now overall, for somebody looking for a very solid experience that's not going to break the bank, looks great, sounds great, the sticky icky 68 won't let you down. I think I even like this better than the KBD Fan 67 Lite. Time will tell though, maybe we'll make a video on that. Hit that like button, hit that sub button if that's something you would wanna see. All right, it has been your boy BT. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.